So the new term starts in uh, a few weeks and I've been working on my teacher planner for the next uh, school year. I want to share it with you in this uh, in this video. I want to talk you through the various features and the various aspects of the teacher planner. It's a very, very comprehensive top to bottom system, all captured in one place in my Notion workspace. I'm sharing it with you today. So in the description of the video, you're going to find a link to so you can buy yourself a copy uh, of this teacher planner. This is the very exact planner which I'll be using every single day from the 1st of September whenever I go back to school. So let's jump into Notion right now and I'll talk you all through the various aspects of the planner. Now the real core of my teacher workspace in Notion is my period by period planner and I use a similar format last year so if you've been watching the other videos in the channel you'll be familiar with this. What we've got here is just uh, a column with the, the dates and for every day in my school, there's six periods. Your school might be different, but you're able to edit it very easily. Um, date and periods one, two, three, four, five, six. That's the first column now for each of those. There's an actual formatted date column so we can sort or we can filter by the actual date. There's a, a column with the year period so that every single separate period in the school year has got a different number. So we can sort all of those periods one through to 1920 or whatever it happens to be uh, and by the way this teacher this period by period planner runs from um early september i think i've started it on the 5th of september which to my knowledge is the earliest that any school would be returning and teaching students this year in 2022 in the uk anyway and it runs right through to towards the end of july 2023 so hopefully all the dates that you could possibly need are included in here including Saturdays and Sundays, just in case some schools do something a bit different or you have some scheduled activities on those days. Um, the dates is just the day, the value of the day in the month. Uh, the, the day is, well, it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and that's done for the full year. Period number is the period number in that given day. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, in my school, we use a system called ISAMS, and I just want to know in ISAMS, what time does each of those periods start? Some of those periods can be a little bit strange. Um, so I could jump in there and you will be able to do the same. You'll be able to jump in there and edit those. Uh, and I should sort the order because that does make a difference. Um, and yep, so those just sometimes it's useful to see is period two what time does that start and have that information connected right there um the 2022 detail column is just my sort of uh, multi-select option for um what's happening in that lesson or what's happening in that period and that doesn't relate to any other databases in this particular column but that is my detail what is actually happening in there is it inset is it sport is it tutor time what is it okay what does relate to another database is the next column, which is my class column, and that relates to, um, that tells me if it, if it is a class that I'm actually teaching in that lesson, that column relates to that class's page in Notion. So the very first lesson I'll be teaching on the 8th of September this year will be 4A, and I can click on there, and this will take me straight to, and I'm gonna talk about the classes database shortly, but for now, that'll take me to 4A's page in the classes database, okay? And I can have various bits of information in there relating to 4A. And you can build it out to include whatever information you want. I've got a few things in there. And you'll be able to build out yourself. Um, but I've only, it's either a particular class or it's not a lesson, okay for that particular classes column uh, 2022 topics that's the topic that i'm planning on teaching for me because i used a similar database last year i was able to just copy and paste those values across if you're building this for the first time you'll have a little bit more work to do to build out your topics database and um, so that, and then you can pull those topics by relation property into this particular topic column but know that if you do that for once you will apart from variations in your scheme of work, and, and those are very easily uh, adapted to, you'll only have to do it once. It'll only be a, a hard bit of work first time. I always have a high level topic. So what is it like percentages? And then within percentages, um, I will have like a subtopic. 
Um, and there, for example, increasing or decreasing bar percentage is probably that first um, lesson in the topic. Now, beside the subtopic column, we've got subtopic resources. And here, if I've got any resources for the subtopic, it will show me what those resources are. Uh, so it's just a good way of seeing, okay, so I know that for increasing or decreasing percentages, we have particular resources there that will support that teaching. Okay, and then it's up to me to have a quick look at, well, what are those resources? Right, let's jump in there, see what those resources are. I know there are some. Let's see what they are. Uh, okay, we've got multipliers, 2.6 lesson plan, and percentage multipliers, exam questions. Um, I'll know, I'll remember some of these resources maybe. And I'll jump in and say, right, for this particular lesson, I'm going to use those exam questions or whatever it happens to be. So I'll quick search. Um, or whatever the... Um, Okay, in this case, just because it's the one that's there, I'll say, okay, in this lesson, I'm going to use 2.6. There is that resource linked in there now. And when I'm in the lesson teaching it, I can jump in here and I can say, right, take me to that resource. Okay, there's this particular resource is a, a typed up lesson plan, but that could be any resource you like. You print that off. There's your start activity on this particular one. Um, super useful. Uh, back into the period by period planner. I've done a video in the past about my retrieval practice and how Notion supports me with that. I've still got those columns, uh, month last retrieve, week last retrieve, and lesson last retrieve. Those are relation property columns to the topics database. So I can copy and paste what's happening um, in the weeks ahead or the weeks behind, sorry, into the relevant one of those columns so that I can then be in the lesson I'm teaching and I can know well, what, what, what did we cover last lesson, last week and last month, and we can get that retrieval practice up and running. Then I have a checklist column for the register. Two things that I often forget, register and our um, student feedback sheets are called pink sheets. Register and pink sheets. I've got those properties in this particular database. So I can then use those in the various dashboards that I'm going to use around about my system or around about my Notion workspace. You could obviously add any sort of checklist that you particularly want to have in your system. Okay, so that's the period by period planner. Going through those columns one by one. A little bit of a, a walk through those. Uh, useful to have done, I think, so that we can see um, what what the basis of that workspace is. Now, I always think it's valuable, first of all, at the very top, in, as my cover image, to have a, an image of a timetable. And um, you can access that particular video of mine. Uh, I'll link to it up at the top right of the screen as you look at it, um, showing you how to get the perfect cover image. And in that, for that one, I use uh, a shot of your timetable to do that. So, I always have my timetable as that cover image at the top. Also, um, very near the top of my planning space is an interactive version of my timetable. Now, this for me is done using the columns um, video. Again, I'll link to the columns video in this at the top right hand corner of your screen. But this just shows me what lessons am I teaching on the next Monday what lesson we teach on next Tuesday and Thursday, and so on. And so I know that on the next Monday that I teach, um, I'll be teaching UC uh, period 2, 5C period 4SL, and FMUB on period 5. And the beauty of Notion, of course, is that if I want to make any notes against 5C's workspace, I can just click in there. It takes me to 5C's page. It's there. It's good to go. You can add any notes, you can make any edits you like in that space. Um, and also within that, this particular space I've got on display is my subtopic for the particular day. So if it was Monday, for example, I may choose to sort of expand the Monday column and see what, top, what the subtopic was and what the high level topic is for 
those particular lessons on the next Monday. And it's this sort of like this interactive timetable where it's not just what lesson I'm teaching, it's also what um, topics I'm teaching. And you could change that to include a view of what resources you have planned to use in each of those lessons. Below the timetable bit of each of those columns is uh, a view of my actions database. So I can see, well, okay, I'm teaching those lessons, but also I'm always going to have extra jobs to do during my day. So let's view those as a separate, um, a separate uh, block within each of those columns. So this is just a view of my actions database uh, in each of those columns. Again, filtered to show me only the actions which I have planned to do on the next Monday or the next Tuesday or the next any day of the week uh, as appropriate for the particular column in the database. And you will have access to all that in the, um, in the, the, the link uh, in the description. Okay. That's planning my days, right? And I can shrink all those down if I so wish. And in fact, you could put all of this inside one toggle so it all shrinks down. Straight below that, I've got a quick capture. So I've got a sync block, okay? And it's a sync block which syncs to anywhere else I want in my Notion system. And I just want somewhere that when I'm in here or I'm on my phone or I'm on any other page in Notion, where I might want to be, I might be where I want to take quick notes, such as my, like my meetings page. I can jump in here. I can make a few notes, wherever they happen to be. And look, it tells me here up top right, it tells me I'm editing those in 15 other pages. So the version you download won't be linked to 15 other pages, but you can create that sync block very, very easily and straightforwardly. Uh, and you will uh, be able to sync that block to anywhere else across your Notion workspace. And any updates you make in here will sync across there. And it's just a very, very quick way of capturing any notes, thoughts, jobs you've got to do, anything you need to remember, stick them in there uh, and you won't, you won't lose them. Okay, other databases which I intend going into in future videos because fundamentally I'm dropping a lot of stuff in this video. Um, it's all super relevant, but I don't want to overload it. Uh, and I want to be able to get the videos out nice and quick. But just to show you the other databases in my workspace, in my teacher workspace. So I've got a period by period planner. That's the one that I've gone into in detail. I've got a topics database. And that includes the high level topics and the subtopics. They're all in the same database. You may choose to separate them, but it's another database then. I keep them all in one. I have my resources database and I have my homeworks tracker. Okay, homeworks track, I'm completely rebuilding that for this year. Super excited, that's gonna be much, much slicker. It's gonna be a subject of a future video, which I look forward to sharing with you. Uh, resources, various resources pages that I've pulled together. My main one being my AA resources, that's my resources page. It's got a couple of hundred resources now, all of them I've chosen and I've used myself. And you would wanna be building that up yourself for your own topics. If you're a maths teacher, you might find value in my resources, but if you're English or something else, you'll need to start building that up yourself. Uh, and it's well worth doing so that it all links together in the system. And you can upload those as long as they're, if you're on the free plan, you can upload up to five megabytes in that uh, resources page. Then a few other pages that I've created uh, of my past exam papers, questions and mark schemes, question papers and mark schemes for GCSE and, and A-level. Uh, I've got a page with my textbooks. So I've uploaded all my textbooks onto Google Drive and then I've linked to those pages um, from here and it's a nice gallery view. So I can quickly come in here. What A-level textbook? I've only done it from A-level textbooks. What A-level textbook do I want to see? Okay, click on that and I can go straight to that textbook. It's quite a nice way of viewing that. And then Mark Willis's um, math page, he shares that freely online. You can go and access that page. Highly recommend it. When you're at it, make sure to give him a follow uh, and a like on Facebook and Twitter. Super guy, very, very generously sharing a lot of his work there. And then uh, an area that I've done doing a bit, a little bit differently this year. So I've got my classes database, which is in here. Um, and if I got some sort of admin relating to my classes, I can come in here. I've got nicely set up to show me 
any to-dos that are related to that class. Sorry, at the very, very top of each of the classes actually tells me what lessons I'm teaching. So I'm teaching 4A, I'm teaching them um, Tuesday period 1, Wednesday period 3, and so on. Um, my to-dos relate to that class, they're in there, and today's lesson, it's all in there. So this that card shows you the information down at the bottom of the actual page, and that's today's lesson. Um, sync block which i've done a video before in the past super useful way that but i'll not go into too much detail on it now <coughs> and then the figure down at the bottom that's the number of students that i've got registered in that particular class okay so that's my classes database um and i'll jump back and then separately to that is my students database so this is my students database in here we've got the students name the class the house that they're in the test scores and a little bit on merits and concerns which is my, my school's lingo for uh, recording discipline and that's a big area i've been working on here so if we jump in to the merits and alerts board i'm not going to go into detail on this in this video but if you buy it now you'll get this included um but actually it's pretty significant once you look at it uh, and once I do the subsequent video on how I'm going to run this. Um, done a lot of work on it, really, really pleased with it. Got this board that if, I, um, um, if I'm in a lesson and I need to speak to a student about uniform, I can come in here, I can say, right, um, uh, shirt and tucked. Okay, and I can edit that little block and I can say, right, well, that's, an, that's not great, is it? And that's a concern for whoever it happens to be. Okay, in this case, concern for Harry, he's not been great. It's the 14th of August, whatever it is. Um, um, and noted with Harry second time this week. Okay, and look, then that will sit there. Ooh, didn't mean to create a new one. That will sit there until I've either sent the email or recorded it in the student um, tracking system as my school have it. I can move it across. Okay, I've sent the email now to the parents and to the tutor. Okay, great. Now I've recorded it in the system. Perfect. Um, and I've been working on that quite a bit. I'm very, very pleased with it. Okay. But we'll go into more detail on how I've built that so that you can work out for your own and adapt it for your own school system in a subsequent video. Uh, FMLB hub, this is just a hub that I set up for a particular class who I wanted to offer some extra support uh, with a few notes. And you might look at this and think, okay, cool. That's, uh, that's a nice setup that I might adapt that for my class. Um, this was for a class that was prepping for mocks and exams and things. So a nice little dashboard there that was set up. That's obviously included. Okay, and a few admin points at the bottom, which I will actually um, strip out because they're not relevant for you. They're more just my sort of internal plans and things. Okay. Whistle stop tour of the Andrew Arnold notion for teachers, teacher dashboard 2022-23. Please jump into the description um, and grab yourself a copy. Took me a couple of weeks to get this all set up and working the way I want it. You can grab it, all that work for yourself for a couple of quid or a couple of dollars uh, and save yourself all that time and effort. And if you bought it, I'm entirely available to help you and support you with it. So just get in touch. Uh, by whatever means you can, Twitter, uh, in the YouTube comments, and I'm, I'm there to help you and support you. You've been watching Notion for Teachers. I'm Andrew. Hit subscribe and the bell icon, and you'll be notified when I'm dropping new videos every single week. Thank you so much for watching. As always, really, really, truly appreciate it, and I will see you again next week. Thanks a lot.